One of my dear friends, Robert, used to be a school teacher in Lindsay, the olive capital of the world. Bobby taught school for several years but got a little weary of it. One day, he decided he wanted to get into sales. Without telling anybody, he just up and quit his job teaching school and jumped into sales. When he did, his brother made fun of him, laughed at him, and put him down. His brother said, Robert's lost his mind. He had a good job teaching school, and now he thinks he's a salesman. He's going to go down the drain, lose everything. His brother put him down something fierce. Bobby said, the way my brother acted when I got into sales made me so mad. I decided to get rich. And my question for you tonight is, is it possible to get that mad? Of course, wealth is not a matter of intelligence, it's a matter of inspiration. Today, Robert happens to be one of my millionaire friends. Bobby is rich. Frank Sinatra said one time, the best revenge is massive success. Get yourself a long enough list of reasons so that after tonight, you never lack for inspiration. You might not have all the answers right away, but you can get the answers if you can get the reasons. Your better future is a dream for yourself and for your family. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? What do you want to see? You got to dream dreams. There's a Bible phrase that says, without dreams and visions, people perish. You've got to have something to go for that inspires the heart and the soul. Dreams are crucial. As the children of Sanchez says, take the crumbs from starving soldiers, they won't die. Take the bread from hungry children, they won't cry. But without dreams, we all will die. Don't lose your dreams for yourself, for your future, for your family. The dreams of love, enterprise, travel, doing things, becoming something unique on your journey here. Don't lose your dreams. Sun dreaming will help. See, reasons will change your whole life. Mr. Schaff said to me, Mr. Ron, I think you've got plenty of intelligence, talent, and ability. Probably what you lack is plenty of reasons. He said, I don't think your current bank balance is a true indication of your level of intelligence. I was happy to hear that. He said, I think you're much smarter than your present bank balance indicates. And that turned out to be true. I was much smarter. But of course, my first question was, well then, why isn't it bigger? He said, you don't have enough reasons. You've got enough intelligence, but not enough reasons. So, see, reasons can change your life. Here's what else I found out. Reasons come first, answers come second. You don't get the answers to do well until you get the reasons. Life has a mysterious way of hanging on to all the answers and only gives them up to the people that are inspired by reasons. So, reasons make the difference in how your life works out. Now, what are some of the reasons for doing well? Let's go through a quick list called reasons for doing well. First is personal reasons. Some people do well for recognition, some for respect, some for the way it makes them feel. They love the feeling of being a winner. Those are good reasons. I have some millionaire friends that keep working 10 to 12 hours a day, making more millions. It's not because they need the money, it's because they need the joy, satisfaction, and pleasure that comes from being a constant winner. And see, it's not just the money anyway, it's the journey, not the money. Once in a while, somebody says to me, boy, if I had a million dollars, I'd never work another day in my life. That's probably why the good Lord sees to it they don't get their million. They'd quit. Next is family reasons. Some people do extremely well for other people, and that's powerful. Human beings can greatly affect each other. Sometimes we will do things for somebody else we will not do for ourselves. We are made that way. I met a man one time who said, Mr. Ron, to do all the things I want to do with my family around the world, I've got to have at least one quarter of a million dollars a year. I thought, incredible, could a guy's family affect him that much? And the answer is, of course. How fortunate are the people that find themselves greatly affected by somebody for personal achievement? We are affected. The writer of a recent psalm said, if not for you, the winter would hold no spring, couldn't hear a robin sing, I just wouldn't have a clue if not for you. So, we can be affected. That might be one of the most stimulating reasons to do well, finding somebody. When Andrew Carnegie died, the wee little Scotsman that built the big steel industry, when he died, they opened up his desk. In one of the desk drawers, they found a slip of paper. On that piece of paper, Mr. Carnegie had written his goal for his life. He wrote it when he was in his twenties. And on that piece of paper, it said, I'm going to spend the first half of my life accumulating money. I'm going to spend the last half of my life giving it all away. What a goal. 
He got so inspired by that goal that the first half of his life, he accumulated $450 million. In the last half of his life, he gave it all away. So, what's got you turned on? What's got you bummed out of sight to get up early and stay up late and hit it all day? Next question. What's got you turned off? When I found the answers to those two questions, my life exploded into change. I finally found out what had me turned off, and I got that cured. And then I got me a long enough list of reasons to turn me on. And once the lights went on for me at age 25, they've never gone out. I've fallen out of the sky a few times, but I've never lost that drive to make something unique out of my life. See, reasons altered my whole life. Now, there's another list of reasons called nitty gritty hard little reasons. Sometimes, those little reasons are the most powerful reasons that can change your life. Sometimes, it doesn't take much. I now carry several $100 bills in my money clip. It's only a few hundred dollars, but it was one of those reasons that turned my life around. Just before I met Mr. Schaff, I heard a knock at the door. I go to the door, and there's a little girl standing there, about this tall, selling Girl Scout cookies. And she gave me one of the finest sales presentations I've ever heard, special deal, several flavors, this whole package of stuff for $2. And with a big smile, she very politely asked me to buy. And I wanted to. Big problem. I'm broke. I don't have $2. And to this day, I can remember the pain and the embarrassment. I'm a father, I'm a husband, I've been to college, I'm working, I'm 25, and I don't have $2. I didn't want to tell her that for some reason, so I did what I thought was the next best. I lied to her. I said, hey, look, I've already bought lots of Girl Scout cookies. I still got plenty stacked in the house, which was not true, but it seemed to get me off the hook for the moment. She said, well, gosh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, and she went away. When she left, I closed the door, and that was the day I said to myself, I don't want to live like this anymore. I've had it with being broke. I'm never going to let this happen to me ever again. I promised that day I would work as hard as possible and would always carry plenty. It took me a little while, but now I do. It was one of those reasons, and I guess I carry plenty for two reasons. One is the way it makes me feel, but also in case I bump into another Girl Scout selling cookies. I'm ready. I walked out of the Bank of America one time up in Saratoga, California, where I used to live. Two little girls were selling candy right outside the bank. Good place, some girls organization they're working for, right? I come walking out of the bank. The first little girl walks up to me. She said, Mr., would you like to buy some candy? I said, I probably would. What kind is it? She said, it's almond roca. I said, my gosh, that's my favorite. She said, wonderful. I said, how much is it? She said, it's just $2. I thought, incredible. I said, how many boxes of that candy have you got? She said, five. And her little friend was standing there. She was selling candy too. I said, how many boxes have you got? She said, I've got four. I said, that's nine. I'll take them all. They said, really? I said, yeah, it's my favorite. I've got some friends. I'll pass them around. They got so excited, put all this candy together. I reached in my pocket and gave them $18. When I got the candy and they got the money, that first little girl looked up at me. She said, Mister, you are really something. How about that? Can you imagine? Only spending $18 and have somebody look at you in the face and say, you are really something. Now, you know why I carry heavy. I'm not going to miss anymore. It was just one of those reasons that helped to change my life. One of my nitty gritty reasons was budget finance. Budget finance used to grind my soul. Way back in those early days, I had fallen for one of those consolidation loans, where you take all your little hard-to-pay bills, put them into one big, impossible-to-pay bill, right? I would get four or five payments behind. This one guy used to call me day and night, night. I don't think they're allowed to do that anymore. Harass me, threaten me, run me in front of the judge, ruin my credit, embarrass my family. One day, he said, we're going to come get your car drag its rear end up and down the street in front of your neighbors. The guy even called me a flake. And back in those days, I'm broke. I'm pitiful. There's nothing I can do about it. But I never forgot how the guy treated me. And when I met Mr. Schaff and got my life straightened out and the money started to flow, that was one of my first projects, budget finance. I poured it on day and night. I finally put all the money together I owed them, which was considerable. I picked a day for the payoff. And when the payoff day came, 
I put the money in small bills in a big briefcase and walked into the budget finance office on Wilshire in Los Angeles. The guy who harassed me so often, his desk was about three back. I walked right up to his desk, startled. He wondered what I was doing there. It was the first time I'd been there since I borrowed the money. Without saying a word, I opened up this briefcase, dumped this pile of money all over his desk. I said, count it, it's all there. I will never be back. And I turned around and stormed out. Now, that might not be noble, but if you haven't tried it one time, you've got to. It can be the day that turns your life around. All you need is the reason that turns you on. Here's the big challenge of life. You can have more than you've got because you can become more than you are. That's the challenge. And of course, the other side of the coin reads, unless you change how you are, you'll always have what you got. I have found in my experience that income does not far exceed personal development. Now, sometimes income takes a lucky jump, but sure enough, unless you grow out where it is, it'll usually come back where you are. Life has strange ways. If somebody hands you a million dollars, best you become a millionaire quickly so you get to keep the money. Otherwise, sure enough, it'll disappear. Somebody once said, if you took all the money in the world, divided it up equally among everybody, it would soon all be back in the same pockets. Incredible. Success is something you attract, not something you pursue. Success is looking for a good place to stay. So instead of going after it, you work on yourself, personal development. See, the major question to ask on the job is not, what are you getting? The major question to ask on the job is, what are you becoming? See, the big question is not, what am I getting paid here? The big question is, what am I becoming here? Because true happiness is not contained in what you get. Happiness is contained in what you become. One of my dear friends, Robert, also known as Bobby, used to be a school teacher in Lindsay, the olive capital of the world. Bobby taught school for several years but got a little weary of teaching one day and decided he wanted to get into sales. So, without telling anybody, he just up and quit his job teaching school and jumped into sales. When he did, his brother made fun of him, laughed at him, and put him down, saying Robert had lost his mind because he had a good job teaching school. Now he thinks he's a salesman, he's going to go down the drain, lose everything. His brother put him down something fierce. Bobby said, the way my brother acted when I got into sales, that made me so mad I decided to get rich. And my question for you tonight is, is it possible to get that mad? Of course, wealth is not a matter of intelligence, it's a matter of inspiration. Today, Robert happens to be one of my millionaire friends. Bobby is rich. Frank Sinatra said one time, the best revenge is massive success. Get yourself a long enough list of reasons so that after tonight, you never lack for inspiration. You might not have all the answers right away, but you can get the answers if you can get the reasons. Your better future is a dream for yourself and for your family. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? What do you want to see? You've got to dream. Dream dreams. There's a Bible phrase that says, without dreams and visions, people perish. You've got to have something to go for that inspires the heart and the soul. Dreams are from the children of Sanchez. It says, take the crumbs from starving soldiers, they won't die. Take the bread from hungry children, they won't cry. But without dreams, we all will die. You've got to dream. Don't lose your dreams for yourself, for your future, for your family. The dreams of love, enterprise, travel, doing things, becoming something unique on your journey here. Don't lose your dreams. Do some dreaming. See, reasons will change your whole life. Mr. Shove said to me, he said, Mr. Ron, I think you've got plenty of intelligence, talent, and ability. Probably what you lack is plenty of reasons. He said, I don't think your current bank balance is a true indication of your level of intelligence. I was happy to hear that. He said, I think you're much smarter than your present bank balance indicates. And that turned out to be true. I was much smarter. But of course, my first question was, well then why isn't it bigger? And he said, you don't have enough reasons. You've got enough intelligence, but not enough reasons. So, see, reasons can change your life. Here's what else I found out. Reasons come first, answers come second. You don't get the answers to do well until you get the reasons. Life has a mysterious way of hanging onto all the answers and only gives them up to the people that are inspired by reasons. So, reasons make the difference in how your life works out. Now, what are some of the reasons for doing well? Let's go through a quick list called reasons for doing well. First is personal reasons. 
Some people do well for recognition. Some people do well for respect. Some people do well for the way it makes them feel. They love the feeling of being a winner. Those are good reasons. I have some millionaire friends that keep working 10 to 12 hours a day making more millions, and it's not because they need the money. It's because they need the joy, satisfaction, and pleasure that comes from being a constant winner. And see, it's not just the money anyway, it's the journey, not the money. Once in a while, somebody says to me, boy, if I had a million dollars, I'd never work another day in my life. That's probably why the good Lord sees to they don't get their million, right? They quit. Okay, next is family reasons. Some people do extremely well for other people, and that's powerful. Human beings can greatly affect each other. Sometimes we will do things for somebody else we will not do for ourselves. We are made that way. I met a man one time who said, Mr. Ron, to do all the things I want to do with my family around the world, I've got to have at least one quarter of a million dollars a year. I thought, incredible, could a guy's family affect him that much? And the answer is, of course. How fortunate are the people that find themselves greatly affected by somebody? For personal achievement, we are affected. The writer of a recent song said, if not for you, the winter would hold no spring, couldn't hear a robin sing, I just wouldn't have a clue. If not for you, so we can be affected. That might be one of the most stimulating reasons to do well, finding somebody. When Andrew Carnegie died, the wee little Scotsman that built the big steel industry, when he died, they opened up his desk. And in one of the desk drawers, they found a slip of paper. On that piece of paper, Mr. Carnegie had written his goal for his life. And he wrote it when he was in his 20s. And on that piece of paper, it said, I'm going to spend the first half of my life accumulating money. I'm going to spend the last half of my life giving it all away. What a goal. He got so inspired by that goal that the first half of his life, he accumulated $450 million. And the last half of his life, he gave it all away. Good question tonight. What's got you turned on? What's got you bombed out of sight to get up early and stay up late and hit it all day? Next question. What's got you turned off? When I found the answers to those two questions, my life exploded into change. I finally found out what had me turned off, and I got that cured. And then I got me a long enough list of reasons to turn me on. And once the lights went on for me, at age 25, they've never gone out. I've fallen out of the sky a few times, but I've never lost that drive to make something unique out of my life. See, reasons altered my whole life. Now, there's another list of reasons called nitty gritty, hard little reasons. Sometimes those little reasons are the most powerful reasons that can change your life. Sometimes it doesn't take much. I now carry several $100 notes in my money clip. It's only a few hundred notes, but it was one of those reasons that turned my life around. Just before I met Mr. Shove, I heard a knock at the door. I go to the door, and there's a little girl standing there about this tall selling Girl Scout cookies. And she gave me one of the finest sales presentations I've ever heard, special deal, several flavors, this whole package of stuff, $2. And with a big smile, she very politely asked me to buy. And I wanted to, big problem, I'm broke, I don't have $2. And to this day, I can remember the pain and the embarrassment. I'm a father, I'm a husband, I've been to college, I'm working. I'm 25, I don't have $2. And I didn't want to tell her that for some reason. So, I did what I thought was the next best. I lied to her. I said, hey look, I've already bought lots of Girl Scout cookies. I've still got plenty stacked in the house, which was not true, but it seemed to get me off the hook for the moment. She said, well, gosh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, and she went away. When she left, I closed the door, and that was the day I said to myself, I don't want to live like this anymore. I've had it with lying, and I've had it with being broke. I'm never going to let this happen to me ever again. I promised that day I would work as hard as possible and would always carry plenty. It took me a little while, but now I do. It was one of those reasons, and I guess I carry plenty for two reasons. One is the way it makes me feel, but also in case I bump into another Girl Scout selling cookies. Right? I'm ready. I walked out of the Bank of America one time up in Saratoga, California, where I used to live. Two little girls selling candy right outside the bank. Good place. Some girls organization they're working for, right? I come walking out of the bank. This first little girl walks up to me. She said, Mister, would you like to buy some candy? I said, I probably would. What kind is it? 
She said, it's almond roca. I said, my gosh, that's my favorite. She said, wonderful. I said, how much is it? She said, it's just $2. I thought, incredible. I said, how many boxes of that candy have you got? She said, five. And her little friend was standing there. She was selling candy too. I said, how many boxes have you got? She said, I've got four. I said, that's nine. I'll take them all. They said, really? I said, yeah, it's my favorite. I've got some friends. I'll pass them around. They got so excited, put all this candy together. I reached in my pocket and gave them $18. When I've got the candy and they've got the money, that first little girl looked up at me. She says, Mr. Ron, you are really something. How about that? Can you imagine only spending $18 and have somebody look at you in the face and say, you are really something. Now you know why I carry heavy, right? I'm not going to miss anymore. It was just one of those reasons that helped to change my life. One of my nitty gritty reasons was budget finance. Budget finance used to grind my soul. Way back in those early days, I had fallen for one of those consolidation loans where you take all your little hard to pay bills, put them into one big impossible to pay bill, right? I would get four, five payments behind. This one guy used to call me day and night. He'd harass me, threatened to run me in front of the judge, threatened to ruin my credit, threatened to embarrass my family. One day he said, we're going to come get your car. Drag its rear end up and down the street in front of your neighbors. The guy even called me a flake. And back in those days, I'm broke, I'm pitiful, there's nothing I can do about it. But I never forgot how the guy treated me. And when I met Mr. Shof and I got my life straightened out and the money started to flow, that was one of my first projects, budget finance. I poured it on day and night. I finally put all the money together I owed them, which was considerable. I picked a day for the payoff. And when the payoff day came, I put the money in small bills in a big briefcase and I walked into the budget finance office on Wilshire in Los Angeles. The guy who harassed me so often, his desk was about three back. I walked right up to his desk, startled. He wondered what I was doing there. It was the first time I'd been there since I borrowed the money, right? Without saying a word, I opened up this briefcase, dumped this pile of money all over his desk. I said, count it. It's all there. I will never be back. And I turned around and stormed out. Now, that might not be noble, but if you haven't tried it, you've got to one time. It can be the day that turns your life around. All you need is the reason that turns you on. Here's the big challenge of life. You can have more than you've got because you can become more than you are. That's the challenge. And of course, the other side of the coin reads, unless you change how you are, you'll always have what you got. I have found in my experience that income does not far exceed personal development. Now, sometimes income takes a lucky jump. But sure enough, unless you grow out where it is, it'll usually come back where you are. Life has strange ways. If somebody hands you a million dollars, best you become a millionaire quickly so you get to keep the money. Otherwise, sure enough, it'll disappear. Somebody once said, if you took all the money in the world, divided it up equally among everybody, it would soon all be back in the same pockets. Incredible. Success is something you attract, not something you pursue. Success is looking for a good place to stay. So instead of going after it, you work on yourself, personal development. T, the major question to ask on the job is not, what are you getting? The major question to ask on the job is, what are you becoming? C, the big question is not, what am I getting paid here? The big question is, what am I becoming here? Because true happiness is not contained in what you get. Happiness is contained in what you become. Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to speak to you about a notion that has the power to transform lives, to ignite fires within souls, and to propel dreams into reality. Today, I want to speak to you about the power of, why not you? You see, my friends, life is a magnificent journey full of twists and turns, challenges and triumphs, setbacks and victories. And yet, amidst this beautiful chaos, there exists a question that can change everything, a question that has the power to shatter limitations, to break down barriers, and to unleash the boundless potential that lies within each and every one of us. That question is simple yet profound. Why not you? Why not you standing at the pinnacle of success, basking in the glory of your achievements and inspiring others with your greatness? Why not you living a life of purpose, passion, and fulfillment? where every moment is infused with meaning and every action is aligned with your deepest values and aspirations? Why not you making your wildest dreams a reality, 
defying the odds and leaving an indelible mark on the world. My friends, the truth is that there is no valid reason why not you. You possess within you all the qualities, all the talents, and all the potential necessary to achieve greatness. You are endowed with the same spark of divinity that has ignited the flames of genius in the hearts of history's greatest visionaries, innovators, and leaders. You are a miracle of creation, a masterpiece of evolution, and a vessel of unlimited possibility. But too often, we allow self-doubt, fear, and insecurity to cloud our vision, to dampen our spirits, and to hold us back from realizing our true potential. We listen to the voices of doubt and negativity that whisper in our ears, telling us that we are not good enough, not smart enough, not worthy enough to pursue our dreams. We allow the opinions and expectations of others to dictate our choices, to shape our beliefs, and to confine us within the narrow confines of their limitations. Well, my friends, I am here to tell you that enough is enough. It is time to silence those voices of doubt and negativity once and for all. It is time to break free from the shackles of fear and insecurity that have held you captive for far too long. It is time to embrace the truth of who you are and the limitless potential that resides within you. So I ask you again, why not you? Why not you stepping boldly into the arena of life with courage in your heart and fire in your soul? Why not you pursuing your passions, chasing your dreams, and refusing to settle for anything less than extraordinary? Why not you rising above the noise and distractions of the world and charting a course for your own destiny? My friends, this is your year, this is your moment, this is your opportunity to seize control of your destiny and to create the life you were born to live. Do not let fear hold you back, do not let doubt dim your light, do not let the opinions of others dictate your path. Instead, stand tall, stand proud, and stand firm in the knowledge that you are capable of achieving anything you set your mind to. Believe in yourself, believe in your dreams, and believe in the power of, why not you? For it is only when you believe in yourself that the world will believe in you. So go forth, my friends, and dare to dream big, dare to take risks, dare to fail. For it is in failure that we find the seeds of our greatest successes. And above all, dare to be the best version of yourself, for the world is waiting for you to shine your light brightly and to illuminate the darkness with your brilliance. You are the captain of your fate the master of your destiny, and the architect of your own reality. So go forth and make this year your year. Make it a year of growth, of discovery, and of transformation. Make it a year of miracles, of magic, and of moments that will last a lifetime. And when you look back on this year, when you reflect on all that you have achieved and all that you have become, you will smile knowing that you answered the question, why not you, with unwavering determination, unstoppable courage, and unyielding faith. Most importantly, constant personal development will be the secret to your success. You see, my friends, life is not merely about existing, it is about growing, evolving, and becoming the best version of ourselves. And at the heart of this journey lies the profound concept of personal development. It is the relentless pursuit of self-improvement, the unwavering commitment to growth, and the conscious effort to expand our minds, hearts, and souls. Why, you may ask, is personal development so essential? Why must we dedicate ourselves to this noble endeavor with unwavering determination and unyielding resolve? The answer, my friends, lies in the very fabric of our existence. We are not static beings confined to a predetermined fate. We are dynamic creatures endowed with the extraordinary capacity to learn, to adapt, and to change. We possess within us the seeds of greatness waiting to be nurtured, cultivated, and unleashed upon the world. But greatness does not happen by chance. It is the result of deliberate effort, disciplined action, and a relentless commitment to self-mastery. It is the product of continuous learning, relentless growth, and unwavering perseverance in the face of adversity. Think about the most successful individuals in history. Think about the titans of industry, the visionary leaders, and the legendary innovators who have shaped the course of human history. What sets them apart from the masses? What propels them to heights of achievement that seem unfathomable to the average person? The answer, my friends, lies in their commitment to personal development. They understand that success is not a destination but a journey, and that the path to greatness is paved with self-discovery, self-awareness, and self-improvement. They understand that the key to unlocking their full potential lies not in external circumstances or fleeting opportunities, but in the depths of their own souls. But personal development is not just about achieving external success or attaining material wealth. 
It is about becoming the best possible version of ourselves in every aspect of our lives, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. It is about cultivating a mindset of abundance, resilience, and gratitude that empowers us to overcome any obstacle and transcend any limitation. My friends, personal development is the foundation upon which all other successes are built. It is the cornerstone of a fulfilling and meaningful life, the bedrock upon which our dreams are realized and our aspirations are fulfilled. It is the catalyst for transformation, the fuel for growth, and the key to unlocking the fullness of our human potential. But personal development is not a one-time event or a quick-fix solution. It is a lifelong journey, a continuous process of self-discovery and self-mastery that requires dedication, discipline, and a willingness to step outside our comfort zones. It is a journey of ups and downs, triumphs and setbacks, but it is a journey well worth taking. So, my friends, I urge you to embrace personal development with open arms and an open heart. Commit yourself to the pursuit of excellence in every area of your life, in your relationships, your career, your health, and your personal growth. Invest in yourself, nurture your talents, and cultivate the habits and mindset of success. And remember, my friends, that personal development is not just about achieving external success or attaining material wealth. It is about becoming the best possible version of ourselves, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. It is about living a life of purpose, passion, and fulfillment, and leaving a legacy that inspires others to do the same. So go forth, my friends, and embark on the journey of personal development with courage, with conviction, and with an unwavering belief in your own potential. For the greatest adventure you will ever undertake is the journey of self-discovery, and the greatest gift you will ever receive is the opportunity to become the person you were always meant to be. Today, I want to talk to you about the extraordinary power that resides within each and every one of us. A power so profound that it can shape destinies, build empires, and transform lives. That power, my friends, is the power of words. You see, words are not just sounds that escape our lips or letters scribbled on paper. They are the building blocks of our thoughts, the architects of our beliefs, and the foundation upon which our actions are built. Your words have the ability to create a life of unparalleled success and fulfillment, or they can shackle you to a life of mediocrity and despair. The choice is yours, but the responsibility is immense. Have you ever stopped to consider the impact of your words? Every word you speak, every sentence you utter has the power to shape your reality. Your words have the power to inspire, to uplift, and to ignite the flames of passion within you. But they also have the power to demean, to discourage, and to extinguish the brightest of dreams. Words are like seeds. When you plant positive, empowering words in the fertile soil of your mind, you nurture the growth of greatness. On the other hand, if you sow seeds of negativity, doubt, and fear, you are cultivating a barren land where dreams wither and die. It's not just about the words you speak to others, it's also about the words you speak to yourself. The conversations you have in the silence of your own mind are just as influential, if not more so, than the conversations you have with the world. The words you use to describe yourself, your abilities, and your potential shape your self-image. Your self-image, in turn, determines your confidence, your decisions, and ultimately your destiny. You are the master of your words, and therefore you are the master of your destiny. Your words can create opportunities where none exist, turn obstacles into stepping stones, and pave the way to a future beyond your wildest dreams. But this power comes with a responsibility, a responsibility to choose your words wisely, consciously, and purposefully. Imagine a world where every word you speak is infused with positivity, kindness, and encouragement. Imagine the impact you could have on the people around you, the way you could uplift their spirits, boost their confidence, and inspire them to reach for the stars. Take a moment to reflect on the words you have been using, both in your interactions with others and in the conversations you have with yourself. Are they words of encouragement or criticism? Are they words of belief or doubt? Are they words of love or fear? If you find that your words have been less than empowering, do not despair. The beautiful thing about words is that you can change them. You can choose to change your vocabulary, your self-talk, and your affirmations. You can choose to replace words like, I can't, with, I can. Words like, I'm not good enough, with, I am more than enough. And words like, it's too difficult, with, I will find a way. Start today. Start now. Make a commitment to yourself and to the people you care about to be mindful of the words you use. 
Use your words to build, to encourage, and to inspire. Use your words to create a vision of the future you desire, and then use them to fuel your actions towards that vision. Remember, your words are declarations to the universe about the kind of life you want to live. Embrace the immense power of your words. Let them be a source of strength, courage, and unwavering belief. Let them be the driving force behind your actions, the beacon that guides you through the darkest of nights, and the inspiration that propels you to reach new heights. I have faith in you, and I know that you have within you the power to create a life that is truly extraordinary. Speak your truth, speak it with conviction, and watch as your words pave the way to a future filled with limitless possibilities. Thank you, and may your words always be a reflection of the greatness that resides within you.